Hi, physical geographers. Last chapter, we talked about glacial modification of terrain, and today we're going to talk about coastal processes in terrain. Like the previous chapter, um, essentially there's going to be a lot of things that are going to build from prior concepts from three or four chapters. So look forward to going through this with you. Okay. So coastal process, we're going to talk about impacts of wave and currents on the landscape. So role of wind and coastal processes, coastlines of oceans and lakes. We're also going to talk about waves, wave motion, refraction, erosion, and tsunamis, essentially um, caused by earthquakes. Okay, so importance of shoreline shaping process or outline tides, change in sea level, lake level, ice push, organic secretions, uh, stream outflow, coastal sediment transports. And then we're going to have depositional um, aspects from sediment to beaches to spits to barrier islands to human alteration of coastline sentiment budgets, um, shorelines of emergence and submergence. Oh, I'm going to jump to other coral reefs, coasts, coral polyps, and reefs themselves. So. All coastlines, hydrosphere, lithosphere, and atmosphere interface in constant energy transfer and movement. Just basic physics. Uh, wind, winds influence coastal topography, generates waves and ocean currents. Process shaping ocean and lake coastlines are similar, except tidal range smaller for lakes, water level change differences, reefs only in oceanic water. Okay, so we don't see reefs and lakes. And then waves and tail transfer energy through cyclical rising and falling motion in a substance. So we see that energy being harnessed. Swells, we see the ocean waves that travel enormous distances away from source disturbance like stormy conditions. Waves, we'll talk about oscillation, so it's a motion of individual particles of water that make a circular orbit. So we see it kind of moving um, in a direction that gets smaller as it goes down. Wavelength, horizontal distance from crest to crest, trough to trough, wave height, vertical distance from crest to trough. So we kind of got our waves down. We have wash and backwash. So wash is going forward. Return flow is called backwash. Uh, wave refraction, change of wave directions, approaches the shore. So we kind of see it bouncing off of what it, when it bottoms out. Wave erosion causing wear and tear on the coast. More aware wave erosion cut off. Seem to like to use Australia quite a bit. Tsunami, seismic sweep, sea wave tr triggered by sudden disruption of ocean floor, usually earthquake or seismic activity. So here's examples 2004 Sumatra, 2011 earthquakes and tsunami. Um, very massive fall. Also, some nuclear cleanup that's probably going to go on at least 50 years. Tides. Alterations of coastal sea, uh, sea level gravity, pole of sun and moon. We see gravitational forces coming into play. And then we talked about changes in sea level and lake level. So you static sea level change, increase or decrease the amount of water in oceans. So really the amount of water and gravitational pull are both the components there. Um, global warming and sea level change, you static change is thermal expansion of water melting, melting of ice caps. So water availability and basically transfer of energy and matter like we talked about early on. Um, ice push buys water and freeze resulting in expansion, expansion and contraction of ice. We have organic secretions as far as the shaping shoreline process. Some aquatic animals or plants produce rock like calcium carbonate. Accumulate in vast massive reefs like we have the Great Barrier Reef on the north east side of Australia. Okay, which is the greatest reef in the world. Largest reef in the world. Um, hence its name. Okay, so coastal sediment transport, longshore currents, water and sediment running parallel to the shoreline. And we have beach drifting as exact motion of sediment to wave action. So we see it kind of moving along with the waves. Sediment budget balance between the sediment deposit on a beach and sediment transported away from a beach. So it's kind of the net to and from. 
And then we have a beach exposed deposit of loose sediment adjacent to a water body. We have a spin a linear deposit of sediment attached to the land and extending out in a down current direction. So we can see the spit kind of closed in the bay, if you will, and where the lagoon is um, uh, to the um, left here. We kind of see where the spit was already established. A barrier island, essentially, where um, deposits were created from the, the lagoon. Basically, kind of looks like the spit we looked at on the previous slide. We have drains and jetties, short walls or dams built outward from beach and MP longshore current. Uh, frequently man made. Uh, jetties built in pairs outside a river or harbor entrance. Okay, so we see these jetties built right here. Uh, groins we just kind of see as one wall, kind of loosening up an uh, area behind it. Frequently see that for building bays for ships and so forth. Uh, change in height of water relative to the land elevation. Relative rise in sea levels, shoreline of submergence. Relative rise in land is a shoreline of emergence. And most coasts show evidence of submergence in the last 15,000 years after melting of the Pleistocene ice sheets, which we talked about but mostly in last chapter. Um, and the evidence of when the Pleistocene um, ice age actually occurred and the ups and downs, the evidence is really contradicts itself. Although we think it goes back three and a half million years, whether it's cyclical or not. Um, there's many different theories on that, which we covered last chapter. Reassure lines close with many estuaries of seawater projecting inland. It's an example of that. Coastal submergence, here's an example. Moraines adjacent to the coast submerged by seas forming islands, so we see land being formed. Um, close to emergence, shoreline raised well above present sea level. So we see land being formed at, but differently. Um, okay. Tropical oceans, nearly all continents and islands are fringed with coral reefs. So we see quite a bit of that. Um, and coral reefs we talked about being formed from calcium carbonate from life. Um, so notice where the, the barrier reefs are seen, um, mostly on coasts on the east side. We see quite a bit in South Asia and Australia. We see some on the east coast of Africa, east coast of South America, Middle America, something formerly called Central America, and then we see quite a bit out in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, and then coral reefs. We have different types of coral reefs. Fringing reefs accumulates on submerged sides on the side of volcano barrier reefs. Coral continues to accumulate its volcano and old fringing reefs sink. Atolls, volcano eventually sinks and coral continue to accumulate upward. Eventually a reef is left surrounding the landless again. Really interesting and then sediment bird deposits can build up on reefs and new islands also. It's really interesting land formations that we really see in this chapter. So with that we uh, conclude the course and really enjoyed having you in the class this semester. I hope you found it very interesting. Um, there's so many different types of uh, landforms that are close to Colorado. Uh, this one we have to travel a little bit for, but it's kind of nice for us to get away and kind of explore the world a little bit, especially since the last couple chapters. We spent a lot of time with Colorado or Western United States and algaes. So this was a fun one. I enjoyed having you in class, and uh, good luck to you.